Let's now test our understanding. So firstly, a quick interesting Google search, which I would like you to do. What do these two words, algorithm and algebra, have in common? Go find out and you will be introduced to a very interesting uh, 9th century Persian scholar named Al-Khwarizmi. For now, let's focus on testing our understanding of algorithms. So the definition of an algorithm is a finite sequence of basic instructions. Let me help you understand these two words, finite and basic, with an example. So here is something that on the previous slide I claimed was an algorithm. So the first thing we have to say, see is, is this a finite sequence of instructions? Well, it looks like it's finite because there are only four instructions. But I want you to look at it very carefully. Clearly, as we have already mentioned, one of these steps, step three, is a complex instruction. It's not a basic instruction. As you can see, step three is asking us to do something again and again for different values of x. But what it is asking us to do might be a basic instruction. But again, you shouldn't just blindly accept it. You should stare at it carefully. You should ask yourself, is it really the case that we can check if x is a factor of n as a basic instruction. So it would be useful to have a set of basic instructions and in every programming language we do have a set of basic instructions. For now I would like you to trust me that for the Python programming language we can indeed check if x is a factor of n using a basic Python instruction. So if that is a basic instruction, then doing that basic instruction again and again for all integers in the range 2 to n minus 1 is again a sequence of basic instructions. And now the entire sequence is a finite sequence of basic instructions. Because once you tell me what the integer n is, this range from 2 to n minus 1 is fixed. And for each integer in that range, 2, 3, so on, all the way up to n minus 1, we are only doing a basic check to see if x is a factor of n. And of course, if it is, we say no and we stop. Finally, if this sequence finishes and we are unable to find such an x, then again we come to step 4 and we stop. So in every situation, we will only do some finite number of basic steps. Now in contrast to this, let's take a look at this algorithm. Once again, I would like you to stare at it and convince yourself, if you can, that this is an algorithm. I haven't yet told you what this algorithm does, but firstly, is it an algorithm? Please think about this very carefully.